Hi, so today I'm going to show you how to make Mrs. Rohr's chocolate cake. Now, Mrs. Rohr was a cooking school instructor in Philadelphia um, from about the 1870s through the early 20th century. And she not only had a cooking school, the Philadelphia Cooking School, but she also took her uh, classes on the road and would travel around um, and give presentations to packed auditoriums of both men and women throughout the Northeast and even went to Chicago for the 1893 World's Fair and gave um, presentations there as well. So she became very well known throughout the Victorian era. And um, to get started with this cake, first I've already preheated preheated the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And then just wanted to show you some of the ingredients we're gonna use here. So um, I have uh, one and a uh, half cup sugar. I have um, two ounces of baking chocolate. Now this is unsweetened and so Baker's is one of the brands. You can use Hershey's or Giardelli or if there's any number. Um, a stick of butter. Uh, one and three quarters cup flour, half a cup of milk, um, four eggs separated. So I have the whites here and then the yolks are in a different container. Um, vanilla, baking powder, um, and then I have a little extra flour here because I'm going to show you um, the first thing that we want to do is to um, take a spring form pan, which I have over here. And um, this has this neat little, it kind of just lifts, lifts out, and then you can see the, um, oops, you can see the bottom of the pan like that. But um, I need to, to butter and flour that first. So I'm actually going to take the butter that I'm going to use for the recipe, and I'm going to put it in my mixing bowl, um, and then use the wrapper from the butter. That's what I usually do. You can use, you know, just a regular, oops, and I've let this butter sit out on the counter for a little bit to soften up. Um, it's much easier when it's um, kind of sits out a little bit than when it's hard right out of the refrigerator, um, especially with mixing um, into a cake or cookies or something. Um, so I just want to show you, so I'm just taking this and I'm going to just go all around the pan here because um, there's just still like a little butter that gets left and it just it's really easy to um, to grease the pan this way I mean you can use some cooking spray they, they actually have special um, baking um, cooking spray but um, I needed to use the butter anyway so I may as well do this and I'm even going up the sides a little bit okay so I'll just put that over here and then I'm just going to take my little bit of flour here and just shake it in the pan and this helps the cake not to stick there and then I'm just going to kind of shake it around like this and you just can kind of see in the excess I'm just going to um, tip into my sink because I don't want the excess there okay so now then we're ready to go with that whenever when I get the cake assembled um, but the first thing I want to do, this cake calls, some cakes call for cocoa powder. This calls for baking chocolate. So um, I have the baking chocolate um, in this bowl here. And see how there's like little squares? So this was half of this package. This uh, Usually a package is four ounces and I need two ounces. But um, I find that it helps to kind of break these apart a little bit. Hmm, if I can do that into smaller pieces um, in order to melt them. And so to melt chocolate, you can either put this bowl over a simmering pot of water that's on your stove that's, that's boiling or simmering and melt it that way. But honestly, I use the microwave again, as I've mentioned before, the Victorians, you know, they embraced newfangled contraptions so um they would have you know hopefully used something like a microwave and it really it makes it a lot easier to melt the chocolate so um i usually start in short intervals because you don't want to over melt it so um 
30 seconds and then another 30 seconds and so on. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll be right back. Okay, so the chocolate, I just want to show you. So, you know, it, it really melts nicely in the microwave. And this, I did this for 30 seconds, then another 30. And then I put it in for 15 because it was looking like it was really starting to be almost done and I didn't want it to over melt. And I find that if I just keep stirring it because the bowl's already hot, it really just melts it nicely. Is, um, cream the butter. So I'm going to go over to my um, stand mixer, which is here. And the butter's already in there, so I'm going to go ahead and let it go. And since my butter was already soft, it's not going to take much to cream it at all. And um, so, you know, it looks exactly like, like that, just very creamy butter when you cream it. Um, and then I want to add the sugar and then the egg yolk. So I'm going to do the sugar first. Oops. Put it in. I'm going to let that mix. I'm going to get a wooden spoon really quick. I'm going to put it a little bit higher. And then um, I want to add the egg yolks. And beat, it, beat it again. And you let it go at a you know a relatively uh, um, medium higher speed just because you want it to mix together really nicely. Um, and then um, we're gonna add the milk, then the melted chocolate, and then the flour. So you know if I lift this up, it looks really nicely mixed together here. Just turn that over like that. Um, now I'm going to add the milk. Now to, when I add the milk, I don't want the mixer to start up at a high speed because then the milk's going to kind of splash up. So I'm just going to put it in and start it up pretty slow. Okay. The chocolate. It's nice and melted, you can see there. Okay, so now we're mixing that together, and then we're going to add the flour. The one in, um, oops, one and three quarters cup flour right here. I'm gonna add that. Oops. And again, with the flour, I don't want to start it up at a high speed because the flour will kind of poof everywhere. So I'm gonna start that low. And then once it starts mixing together, then I'll let it go. It needs to really have, um, as the recipe says, a vigorous beating. So we're going to let it go. So to beat the egg white separately, um, I'm going to, I changed the mixing bowl and um, I made it, I changed the beater too, to this kind, um, to that, to like a whisk. And I'm going to beat the eggs to a stiff froth, so they have to be nice and, and frothy. So I'll show you that, what that looks like. Okay, so now the eggs have been beaten to a stiff froth. It takes a couple minutes, typically. Um, and I'll just show you. So, um, oops, if you pull the beater away, it's, it's nice and frothy on there. Um, so what I want to do now is add this to the chocolate mixture that we just together and and then I'm going to add baking powder and vanilla and vanilla really helps kind of balance out a recipe um, that's why a lot of baked goods will call for vanilla um, it just it gives it like extra oomph <laughs> um, so here's what the oops frothed eggs look like Whoop. so I'm going to go ahead and put them in I'm going to put this um, beater back on. Oops, to turn it. 
And then I'm going to add a teaspoon of baking powder and a teaspoon of vanilla. I'm going to do the baking powder first. Um, just a teaspoon. And that's going to help make it rise. Um, the eggs help too, but the baking powder gives it just a little bit extra of um, the chemical reaction to make it the bake good rise. Vanilla. Okay, now we're going to mix all this together. I need to put it in the springform pan, which I had put over here. And I'm just going to kind of tap this off and put the bowl down with my spatula. Okay, so now we're ready to put it in the oven. It's going to bake at 350 for about 35 to 45 minutes. I know it's a large range, but just you know, keep checking it. Um, it's done, and I'll show you when it comes out. You, if you stick a toothpick in and it comes out clean, that's you know how you always test for cake. So I'll start at 35 minutes and then just kind of check on it. Really, ovens vary too. So um, okay. So it's been 40 minutes. I checked at 35, but the cake wasn't quite ready yet. So um, here I'll let you see. I'm going to take it out. Um, I had used a toothpick to um, uh, test, and it's coming out clean. So we're good. So I'm going to go ahead and take it out. And I'm going to let it um, cool over here on a wire rack. So, you know, the rack can be one of these low racks or they there's also higher racks that you can get that are more raised, but it really doesn't matter. It just needs to cool. And then um, once it's cool, we're going to take it out. Um, I'm sorry, we take it out of the pan. And I'm going to show you how we're going to make a pretty pattern similar to this on the recipe with um, we're going to take a doily. Um, and then put some confectioner sugar over it to make a really pretty lacy pattern. Um, and then you can garnish it with strawberries if you'd like or whipped cream or something. Okay? Okay, so the cake has cooled. And now um, I'm going to take it out of the pan and then show you how we can decorate it. And this is just one way. You can really use your creativity and do whatever you'd like. Um, but just to show you, you know, the springform pan has this little clip thing. And then you just kind of, it's really neat, just pops out like this. We'll put that aside. And frankly, you can just leave it on this bottom part and put it on your plate if you'd like. Um, I often will do that because, you know, it's just easier. But, you know, if you want to take it out of that, um, you can just use um, a serrated knife and and pop it out so let me just kind of just want to cut the bottom and it's sliding off really nice because i had greased the pan <laughs> with the greased and floured the pan so it looks like it's going to pop out pretty nice and i don't even need a i had my spatula handy um so hold on just a second so this now it's on my plate here and I just want to show you um, this aside. Um, this is a pretty plate. And so I'm just going to take um, a doily, you know, just a paper doily, and put it right on top. And then we can sprinkle confectioner sugar over it. And it's going to make, when we take the doily away, now it's going to make a mess on my counter, but that's okay. Um, when we take it away, it's going to have a really pretty pattern on top of the cake so almost like you know when you're a kid doing stencils or people do stencils for other things too it's the same kind of concept um, and I love this shaker with the confection ooh, <laughs> confectioner sugar because it really you can just sprinkle this on a lot of things and it makes it look really nice um, and it's it's an easy way to to pretty up your baked goods to as you know, as a way to, to phrase it. So let's see if this has enough on here. I'm just gonna lift it up. And yeah, so we have, I'll put that over here. So we have this nice pretty pattern on the top. Um, and 
We could even like take it again if we wanted to do something in the center like this to make it so that it's all on the cake because there's always that center piece that doesn't get any sugar on it. So let's see. And we have a little bit here. And it just depends on what your doily the pattern that you find. So yeah, so then you have um, you know the little pattern on top. And then I just cut up some strawberries and um, place them or we can place them around here to make it even prettier. Kind of um, make a pattern around the sides. However you want to do it. I know strawberries can be different um, sizes. Oops, that one fell off. But, you know, you get the hint. You just kind of, um, you know, go, go around the sides like that. And um, then if you wanted to cut a piece and plate it with um, some of the fresh strawberries, you could do that too. So we can just... Um, Put this down again and you can see so just cut a slice so you can see what it looks like inside Oops. I have a plate here my strawberries are falling <laughs> on the counter and oops, I'm just gonna lift this up and look how nice and moist this cake is it's um, and as you can see it's and I mentioned this um, you know, before that, it's lighter than a, than like a devil's food cake, um, but it's just so like light and airy. Um, it's nice to have just the one layer. You know, it's it's not overly rich um, and heavy. So um, so yeah, you can put some little strawberries on the side here, make it really pretty. Um, and then just have your fork and you know you could always put a little whipped cream that's always a good enhancement or just leave it like this with the strawberries and it really is a delicious dessert and you can say hey this is one of the first chocolate cake recipes ever in the US and um, from a Philadelphia cooking instructor so that's always a bonus to say as well enjoy